Hello everyone and welcome to our lesson. I don't know what number it is, but I know it's May 9th, if that matters to you. <laughs> um, we are playing for the first time. It's not, it's not the first day that se the new Sej rework is out, but this is the first day that we're playing it. And that feels really strong. If I can just say, holy smokes, that Sej rework feels really strong. So uh, we've had a few good games on her. Uh, but I want to see, we're going to start with the first game. And we're going to review this one today. Because this is probably when we're playing the least optimally. Because we aren't used to the changes in our kit just yet. So we want to see what we can glean from this game. So we'll go ahead and download this and hop right into the replay. The changes that happened, her Q is the same. Uh, it's, it's basically the same. Instead of knocking back and knocks up. It's the same thing. You can charge through some things. It's basically the same thing. Um, her W is uh, different. Instead of like flailing immediately and a first empowered auto attack, it doesn't have an empowered auto attack. It just goes directly into like a flail mode. But instead of just flailing around you, it flails first in a cone in front of you and it'll knock back think of like graves as auto attacks it will knock back the jungle creeps and then it recoils back to you and shoots out forward in a straight line and that applies stacks of a passive think of brawn passive a four stack passive where whenever you have it stacked instead of just automatically getting it like you do with brawn oh hold on let's uh click into the game here there we go Oh, we had it. There it is. There. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, instead of just getting it automatically like you do with Braum, uh, you have to use your E, but your E is basically never on cooldown. It has a two second cooldown, and you can only use it uh, on the same target uh, every 10 seconds. Let's actually swap over to the blue cam here. So this was a bit of a risky like way to walk. For Rakan, because it'll give away if somebody's watching here, they came into the tri brush late, they would know that he's poking around. If somebody uh, happened to be in that bush, we would have got jumped a little early. But that does let us know it's completely secure. So I'm able to go a little bit more forward here, and we're able to get our nice three buff start. And the other change was her ultimate. It's no longer just the instant lockdown, that's kind of her E now. So we're doing this. Uh, red to get a nice 3 buff. I think because we swapped the aggro so many times, I actually had problems leashing it at the very end and it reset. Yeah, it reset off 2 health. Very unfortunate. Um, so that put us a little bit behind in our jungle clear. But, not as far as it put uh, Vi behind. We unfortunately didn't see her before the end, but we are able to go ahead and get our blue buff. Just go ahead and recall. So we're completely topped off. We can run right here, slam a ward down to make sure. Well, actually, we didn't slam the ward down. We just did this this time. Um, it can be more slightly optimal to slam a ward on it and then look for this gank earlier. Oops, we're charging right through that gank. Um, slam a ward down rather than taking it so you can get a full health gank off and then get a slightly little bit more additional time out of the overlap there. So right here, they're already running back. It leads me to believe that it was wards here. Still look for the Q. Okay, hit on the Sona. Just throw out all the abilities on Sona. Good forces flash. This is the passive we're referring to. Not quite stacked up on any of them yet. Then we back off. And Zaya is OP. <laughs> so wonderful. Uh, we start to look for the back in this brush. But... Since it wasn't warded, Lucian actually felt safe enough to step forward, given how low they were. So we go ahead and cancel it. And we just barely clip him on the edge there. Very lucky for us. And we force his flash, because again, this passive, he was about to be rooted, and Zaya would have been able to finish him off again. So, beautiful. Blew a bunch of summoners bot. Very nice. Um, I'm not sure if we were able to clear these crugs safely. Uh, this might will help to make it pretty easy. Yeah, it doesn't seem... It seems like our clear is fairly strong. Um, our passive now is a bunch of resistance bonuses. 
And that really helps us uh, in the jungle. It does proc off of jungle monsters, so you want to be sure with your gank that you're going into it with your passive up. That way you don't take any damage going into the gank. Um, but it will proc on your jungle monsters as you do your clear. That way you can clear a little bit more effectively. So, there's a little bit of a fight breaking out here, but I'm thinking safe to disengage for Rakan if he wants to. He's just giving assistance to mid, so I'll just take this first clear. Then I'll look for anything that's happening around here. Try and go... Uh, Yasuo would play position down here initially, and then he instantly starts positioning upward. So I think this is warded, and I should have just immediately gone in on him rather than trying to wait for Ari to set up with a charm. Unfortunately, we can't make it happen. I think that was in part my fault. We should have just gone right in him. And as soon as I leave... There's a gank from Vi, so that's super unfortunate. And I just little tunneled on that scuttle crab there. I, think, I mean, seeing how low he got, we could have definitely got a kill on him if I was there when Vi came, and I just counter ganked and I abandoned the scuttle crab. So, focusing on the mini map there, that's just a map awareness thing and prioritization. But if I, I think if I had been paying more attention to the mini map, we would have been able to get the kill on Yasuo. Possibly, like, trading Ari for it, but certainly not this, where we have to give up three people to get that kill. Beautiful Exhauster by Rakan to make her afterburn flash, by the way. That was really well played by his part. A lot, a lot of people like myself might have just been like, ah, fuck it, and just accepted their fate, but that was a really good exhaust. Her flash was definitely worth his exhaust. So we're going for the clear here. We want to give this to Ari. Uh, to help her get back in that lane, but she's so in the thick of a fight right now with Yasuo, we wind up just having to finish it ourselves. This sweep reveals that Vi's here, so I'm looking to back up Volibear. Can't make anything happen. Look mid to give some support here. Just clear out the control ward. Try to get some more vision of where the jungle is. Look for a fight on the Vi here. That's the ultimate, and as soon as, if we can get a single target isolated like that, sure Ari wasn't there immediately at the start, but that lockdown on our ultimate is, at least on single target, is still just as strong as it was before. So finding somebody in the jungle like that I think is an absolutely correct way to play Sedge. So I might try to go aggressively on the map when I hit 6 with her from now on, looking for invades to try and recreate that situation as often as possible. Now it does mean I won't have six available here in the mid lane or here in the river as they're looking to get uh, control of the first trait, which is unfortunate. Rakan is very gutsy this game. I like the way he played. He has a very aggressive play style. Um, we look to try and make things happen. Unfortunately, we can't really get the most optimal situation here. And I think I actually flashed. My smite was 550 right now, I think. 510. There was n almost no opportunity there for me to get the smite. Probably shouldn't have been a hero. This is why you guys always hear me say in stream, like, don't try to be a hero. If it's super late game and there's a Baron and, like, it's their only hope back in the game, you have to be a hero, otherwise you lost anyway. But in that situation, it was like, there was too many people there. It's just the first Drake. It's a little bit bad prioritization. And the reason I ping this so aggressively is because we just pressured in the top and jungle, or top and mid lanes, and we have wards in the jungle, so we have basically control over that much of the map. So that's a free herald. Absolutely free herald. You can't contest it. Leash a little bit for Volibear so he can hit his item break, which I presume he was going for here. I'm actually going to check here. Interesting build path. Uh, waiting in base. I don't know. Regardless, it doesn't matter. I think it's right to presume that he needs that and just hand it over. Because I'm already, like, doing pretty alright with my, uh, clear. So. Or with my, uh, build. So. Rotating here was really good for Volibear to come with us, Bach. Because now we have three here for Harold. Um, glad he stuck with me through the camp. Glad Zaya shoved this. And glad Zaya didn't back. 
when I uh, think you're not doing it. Very much appreciated. Um, this was incorrect use of Rift Herald. Because you see, right there, and I thought this as soon as it happened in game. Once I saw like how quickly was Zaya here, this was getting whittled down, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have summoned this Rift Herald here. Because the Rift Herald charges in right now. So it's effectively doing like, what is that, 10%? Let's see here. Not even that. That's doing no damage. It's doing no damage. The minions are taking this out, right? But the Rift Herald does damage. Uh, it will overkill turrets and do additional damage. That just doesn't go anywhere. And the more damage Rift Herald does with her charge, the more damage she takes on herself. So even though she only knocks out about 100 hit points, it was actually even less. Jesus, it might have been like 10. <laughs> um, even though she only knocks out very minimal amount of damage onto the turret, she takes full damage as if she was hitting it for the full 50% of the turret that she can do with her first charge. So this was actually improper use of Herald. We should have just taken this with the numbers we had, pushed, and if we had an opportunity to push, then summon that Herald. So a little bit of mismanagement, but once we had her summoned, it was right to just continue to press on as aggressively as we could. Positioning here to be able to W the minions back like that to keep them off Herald, I think is the right play. That's good. Let me just leave Herald to her fate here. Uh, we've... This was actually a good play, if I recall. It looks kind of weird, just haven't seen it now, but... Um, I think, so yeah, Volibear went in to try and get some damage, but me and uh, Zaya have left. That's an insane amount of bite damage out of Volibear. So it might have actually been correct for us to stay there and try and fight with him. But given that we didn't, we, I don't want Yasuo to be able to hit an ult on him, let alone me too, that would be a disaster. So I just throw down my ult, and while he does still land the tornado, it keeps him stunned long enough to where Volibear can't be ulted by Yasuo, so... I do have to burn my ultimate to save Volibear there, even though it was possible we could have gotten a kill if we'd gone in there. But it's an unfortunate result of a split call. That's why it's so important to just make whatever call your teammates make, rather than the optimal one. The optimal one there might have been for Volibear, uh, to, or to us have gone in with Volibear, but once that had been decided against by us backing, it was right to back off. So, hard to adapt to stuff like that. Good to get some counter jungling in. Good to notice the Vi here. I don't think I actually did notice Vi because I was looking like this on the screen. Until like right about here. Luckily I had decent reaction time then. We were able to get some good damage down and burn Vi's ultimate. So that worked out. Overall. The Zyra Rakan duo is just too strong. Um, I'm not sure they were actually a duo, but those two champions together. And my ultimate isn't available yet, so I can't really make the best out of this, but he does dive right into me. No, my ult actually was available. Okay, this is... I remember this now. My ult had just come back up during this. So we're looking to try and get a shot onto them when they're grouped like this. Because even though it'll only stun one person now the initial person it hits it creates that huge like new new ultimate zone that triggers with damage at the end and it has a huge slow so we want to go for that so i'm looking to try and get an angle here if i can and i try and throw it out right at the yasuo but unfortunately vi cues right into it as soon as i launch it so fortunately or unfortunately i mean we get some good peel off of zaya uh, by stunning by that long. Fortunately, we still don't really have a, the team fight go well in our favor there. So maybe it was too aggressive to look that heavily. I'm not sure how much gold we had available at this point in time, but it was possible we were being greedy. I'm going to look at how much items we buy after this back. I think we just uh, ward up for a little bit. Okay, never mind. Forget that point then. Um... See them? Where did we see them? We saw the mid. Let's actually jump back even further. Yeah, we gotta go way far back here. Okay, so we see them mid. See three of them? 
This is the last time we see three of them. Right here, I think. And we know they're basically in this circle here. Somewhere within that range. So they might be rotating over to Drake. So we rotate over to Drake to get vision. Because it is infernal. So this one's very high value if we can contest it. Again, I'm not I'm not gonna make that hero play I made earlier, especially not at this HP to start it. But if they're not here, if they haven't started it, and if Volibear, in walking this far, can't see them in any of this vision, and we just walked from here. So they're not anywhere here. They have to be behind this green line on the minimap. That means they all went back to base and they're not doing Drake. So deciding even though we're low here to go for this Drake, I think it's actually a free Drake. You know, it looks very risky. I think that was absolutely free. And it turned out to be free. So that was a good read of the situation on our part. Um, seeing that they were fighting so hard there, maybe backing was wrong. It's possible. I was very low and out of mana. It said she was pretty unimpactful when she doesn't have mana. She feels like a giant mana. Uh, full clearing that. Well, not really full clearing, but getting that full of a clear might be wrong. We might have to look for more of a fight here because Volibear was so deep. Maybe we could have found a pick there. You decide to throw the ultimate out here. Because I thought it was the last chance for us to engage. Now Ari does have her ult triggering right now. So she's probably close enough. But these two probably aren't close enough. Maybe Rakan can get to me. But I'm not sure this is the best use. Luckily I think just Ari being close enough. To there. And we are able to transition that. So that was a little bit greedy of an ultimate for us. It did work out well. But I think again the map awareness there. We, we weren't... We weren't taking an ult that was... This is just poor choice by them being that close in to defend the turret. Um, I think we get Inhibitor off that, don't we? Yeah, nice. So we get Inhibitor. And we look to go Baron. Um, still, with that ultimate, I think that it was probably a little bit too greedy to have gone for that. Because my teammates were too far behind me on the map. And nice. With this much vision on the map here. With that huge vision line. We just had minions right there. That was super, super free barrier. So that's a good call. But we need to just, I think, improve our map awareness a little bit there. Because if I knew how far back my team was, maybe I wouldn't have greeted so hard and been like, Ah, I just want to get this ult off though. Because before that exchange that followed where we got Inhibitor and Baron... The game was still very close. So I think that was a little bit greedy. If we had better map awareness there, we could have made that play. We could have had a bit a bit more restraint in our judgment on exercising that play. We have the super minions pressuring here. So that pins at least one person here, which enables a split push, right? So this isn't exactly uh, an ideal situation for either side because there are two here and Zaya's in base but there's still three on three here with Baron on our side <laughs> she taunting them um, she's either ulting right now or taunting them. okay yeah she's ulting so since we have the Baron on our side theoretically fighting in the minion wave will always go in our favor because all else the same we have Baron up minions to help with our call for help and they don't I do not know what Kakona is or Vape Nation, but I appreciate you participating in the chat. <laughs> Anyways, since we have that, we sh we don't need to rotate there. We don't need to rotate to this lane because this is already pushing that deep with supers, which is pinning them to allow us to get an even slightly slanted in our favor fight with the minions. And I can split push. So I think being here is the correct correct decision as that fight breaks out definitely if we were there for the fight we could have made a difference but i think keeping the pressure so when they do continue to press in vane is still pinned away from her team and i'm not even trying to auto attack this turret i'm just keeping the baron buff on these minions to pressure this to keep vane pinned here which again allows us to group around here 
to reassert the push with the super minions, which will pull someone else away from here. And now it's two people, now it's just three. If Zaya gets there, this is a free turn and possibly a free inhibitor. All the while, I'm doing my thing with Vi. Just letting the minions attack, keeping Vi busy. Take her ultimate, great. Throw my ultimate out, that maybe was too greedy. Seeing the kills happening, I just wanted to get more damage onto Vi, keep her for sure obligated to remain here. Maybe that wasn't the best ultimate, maybe still saving it was right. We do wind up getting the kill. I think we're a little... A little suboptimal use of our ultimate, this game. Um, luckily it still went in our favor because we had like people with those score lines, right? <laughs> so it didn't really matter. But I think just when to use our ultimate, both in the context of trying to get a little bit more value out of it and trying to get more control over situations. Like that last Vi ultimate, or last ultimate onto Vi, was actually, I think, a decent use of it because it kept her away from her team during a critical point of defense there when we were breaking the base even further. But... There was a couple there, the one in mid lane wasn't the best. Um, the retreating ultimate to help Volibear get out of that engagement was unfortunate, but I think that was the right call. Still, I, I think if we had a little bit better awareness of the map at that point, we could have just been with Volibear to escort him out. If not help him get a kill there, like he was going for on Sona, we could have just had our presence there, and that would have given him a safer disengage route. So a little bit better positional awareness, but also how that relates to our ultimate. Because we need to be able to get a right angle to get onto the right people, um, which didn't happen, that team fight near the mid-inner turret. And it might save us an ultimate like the situation with Volibear. We might not have to use that ultimate if Volibear uh, just has us present with him. So a little bit of ultimate management and positional awareness i'm not sure exactly how to phrase that but you'll see it'll be the title of the video <laughs> anyways thank you all for hanging out i hope uh this enlightens some people i know there might be some people actually looking up this video randomly just because says rework is out and seeing how people play her uh, might be helpful so if you know anyone who's trying to play new sesh send them the video hopefully this will help them uh in some way seeing the kid in action thinking about how to use her new ultimate properly in these situations. Um, and other than that, I'll see you guys next episode.